All right, good evening, everybody. Let's go ahead and do a mic check, an audio and visual. Let me know how everything is going. How's everybody tonight as well? We'll give it a minute. There's always a delay here on YouTube. Good, good, everything sounds good. This is how it's going. Awesome. Let's see, let's, let's see. We, we have 271, everybody's early. Great, welcome all. Let me go ahead and let's just get class started. Um, give me just a second. Okay, so welcome everybody. I'm Coach Dakota, welcome to Slow Markets. If you're new here, let me know in the chat. I'm always interested to see the new traders if this is your first time. Um, we're gonna be analyzing the live markets. So you can definitely see our top step risk disclosure. I just put it there in the chat. Since we are analyzing the live markets, everything that I say is for educational purposes only, right? I, I hate to see the messages where traders are like, I followed your trade and I blew my account. Well, you know, that that's your own fault. This is for education and a lot of what I'm talking about is how I really trade. So most of my trades are, um, good setups in terms of the way I'm, I'm reading my analyzing and it's more about the concept, right? I'm not showing you how to trade. I'm teaching you and hopefully you could figure it out yourself. So anyway, let's go ahead and give me a second. I just got a message. Oh yeah. I, I forgot to remind everybody. So if you were not here yesterday or the day before or any of the other days, there is no class tomorrow. There's no slow markets tomorrow. The markets are closed. We're going to have a nice three day weekend. So that being said, I got some amazing news. We, we only have, we only have 400 traders here. Uh, you know, three, yeah, now it's 400 and people is going to start to join in. And remember what I promised everybody that I'm going to reward the, the traders that do show up. Um, yeah. What do you guys think? Should I, should I do a giveaway today? Should we do a fire drill today? Let's do it. Oh, everyone's saying yes, 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 yes. All right. Well, let's do it. Let's go ahead and do the fire drill. No, I'm just joking. That's April Fools. Uh, I don't have permission to do the fire drill yet. Sorry, guys. Figured I could just pull, have some fun with you. Um, <laughs> take that. So if you just showed up for the free stuff, too bad. We're going to run class and maybe it, it will be another day. So <laughs> that's my April Fools. Sorry, guys. Um, let's go ahead and jump into class. You guys could see I have a trade on during the NASDAQ. So let's review this. Let's review the NASDAQ. And before, actually, before I do that, today was, today was, was really messed up. I, I had, I hit my daily loss limit, um, in my live account. And let me show you, I've been trading for, you know, over 13 years. And this, this has never happened to me before. Um, it was a little frustrating. Um, let me pull it up on my phone. So give me just a second. I'm, I'm pulling it up on my phone. Let's see here. So everyone knows I was trying to short the Nikkei. I was trying to short the Nikkei and I, I put a couple of orders on and I, I hit my daily loss limit on my live account and I don't think it will show on my phone now because it's the next day and it's rolled over, but let's go ahead and zoom in and let me, let me talk and go through this because this is the first time this has, this has happened to me and over the past 14 years, I, this is, this has been very frustrating. This is, um, I've been a little frustrated. I vented a little bit to some of my trading friends. Um, this is the Nikkei and everyone knows I was trying to short it. I placed a sell limit. 
um, as we could zoom out and yeah, I see everyone's talking, uh, <laughs> but if we could zoom out, I placed a short on the Nikkei and yeah, I, I hit my daily loss limit and that was really, really frustrating. However, the reason why is it was 100% myself. I, I put in the wrong order size. I went to scale into a, you know, multiple multiple position short here on the Nikkei. I had a sell limit before I went to bed here at 47.85. And I thought I just did one contract and I was getting going to be shorting it as we go up. So I was looking to scale into, you know, three or four contracts as we was rallying here on the Nikkei. And I placed my orders, I went to bed, and I woke up this morning and I was stopped out um, at 40,805. And you guys could see this was the high of the session. 40,805, this was a live account and the liquidity that happened was me, my liquidity, I got liquidated at the high. So my orders made the high of the day here in the Nikkei to uh, lock me out. Unfortunately, I thought I was only putting a limit in for a sell one um, for my final contract. However, on my phone, instead of a one, you could fat finger and it did sell 11 as my last one and immediately went up, hit my daily loss limit and then stopped me out, right? And then I woke up that morning and I looked at it and I said, oh, Nikkei's down. I think when I woke up, it was like down around like three, in here in the 300s. I'm like, oh wow, this is such an amazing trade. Checked my account and it was at the daily loss limit. So very unfortunate. I see it happen to traders all the time and letting you guys know it, you are not a loan. It happened to me. It, it's very frustrating, <laughs> but yeah, all that being said, yeah, everyone knows that I, I, I try to do an April Fool's joke, but it sounds like, you know, you guys are trading off. Stay tuned. If you guys bear with me throughout the whole slow market, um, we are going to be doing a fire drill uh, near the end of class. And, and I really want you guys to stay through this. It, it wasn't an April Fool's joke. But yeah, you know, Nikkei played an April Fool's joke on me. That That is for sure. That's a good example, right? Double check your orders, double check what you're doing. It's pretty bad. You know, in two weeks, I, I did two double fat fingers and hit a daily loss limit twice um, in two weeks. So that that was definitely frustrating. Um, I was sleeping through the whole thing. So good thing that happened after I went to sleep or else I would have been having some nightmares about that. So anyway, let, let's jump into it. I, I did place a couple quick trades. I want to review them here before we jump into the rest. Um, accidentally blowing accounts is such a frustrating thing, um, especially when it's alive, right? Accidentally um, placing bigger orders than normal, especially in, in a live account. Thank goodness for a daily loss limit, right? If it wasn't a daily loss limit, um, who knows what could happen? You will tonight instead emotionally. <laughs> um, what happens when you hit a daily loss limit? Um, nothing really. Your account just gets locked out for the day and then you can continue to try to trade the following day. Um, welcome everybody. Emotional damage. It definitely was. So I'm going to go ahead. I did place a trade. Uh, I placed a couple of trades before class and I wanted to, to review them briefly. Um, here on the Nikkei, this is the Nikkei, the Japanese market. As you can see, this is a five minute chart. We had that big sell off yesterday. And you can see my me myself getting wrecked over here. And then we had that sell off. We did have a spike going into the Asian session. We had a little bit of sell off. You guys could see that I entered one contract short. I took some profit here at 430. That was a nice winning trade. And then before I started class, I think you guys all seen the trade that I had going on over here on the NASDAQ. So let's go over the NASDAQ. I like to start with the NASDAQ and I like to start on a higher time frame. And let's zoom out. Let's start on the daily and I'm going to review very much the same exact same thing that we've been looking at um, for the past week it is still holding true. We had the rally. We had a bullish flag here, you know, very similar. We had a rally. 
and we're still holding a bullish flag. We didn't have a solid breakdown. However, today it looked a little bit like there might have been a breakdown. Um, we're still kind of in this consolidation, you know, kind of going slowly down into the right. If we zoom into a 60 minute chart, we could see some very basic technical analysis that worked its magic today. Um, this was the FOMC rally. Remember, everyone knows this FOMC rally. This was a previous resistance, right? Support becomes resistance, resistance becomes support, right? Um, we had the FOMC, we sold off. Sure enough, we went right down to the top of this resistance. Um, is it behind me? Yeah, let's see. There you go. You guys could see it um, much better now. And we just started to rally off of that. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't trade today because I got locked out of my account with my daily loss limit. Um, so I got to watch it. However, I feel like this, and, and maybe Phil is not the, the right word, but if we continue to have that, what do you want to call it, flagging pattern here on the daily, remember we analyzed all this on the daily, then essentially the, the, the trade that makes sense is to buy these dips and look for the market to continue up towards these highs. Um, we did have that nice rally into the end of the day. We had a little bit of a pullback and you know i found a good setup to get in long i was in two contracts um i closed off one of them for profit you guys could see my account uh, my trades i was in two contracts i pulled off one for a profit and i'm holding on to this one to see if we can um, have some type of continuation into the end of the night so if we zoom in and we continue to zoom in let's talk and see what we are going to be looking at so we had that sell off, we had the consolidation, we had the break to the end of the day, we had kind of a pullback. And if we zoom into a five minute chart, we could kind of see, we kind of see what I was looking at and what we were looking for was this is the, the end of day rally. That was a really, really strong, you know, 30 minute rally into the close of the New York session. Once we closed, we sold off and I was looking at this as a pullback. We kind of chopped around here. We did sell off and we, we went hunting for stop losses. And then we started to, to push up a little bit. And then I got triggered in. I went ahead and hopped into two contracts long. I took one contract off for take profit. I, I think it was right around 500. And then I'm staying on this one. You can see where my stop loss is. I am going to be looking to hold this trade overnight possibly where maybe we see a rally back up to the high of, you know, the mid 500s up to the top of that consolidation flag that we were looking at. We shall see. Um, I was, I was kind of thinking that we could continue net there. We'll see. It is slow markets. We don't see a lot of price action um, at this time, maybe between now and to tomorrow, the next time I check it. I'm going to watch. I might trail this up before I go to bed. Um, and see if we could break out and, and hold above 500 because 500 is a key psychological level. We broke above that during the Asian session. We sold off and we held just below. And then it looks like we were trying to test and hold above 500 um, lately. And we're kind of hovering around there. So I would like to see us obviously continue going up and to the right. I'm in a risk-free trade essentially because this was two contracts. I pulled off one for take profit. And so essentially, this is basically a risk-free trade where that's the best position a trader could be in, right? Risk-free trade, I let it run overnight and worst case scenario, I'm even. Best case scenario, we rally up 100 points and I have a great winning trade. Um, let's open up to, to some questions before we continue the analysis. I will be going over crude oil, um, touch base a little bit on gold and then finish off maybe with, with some Nikkei. Ryan, fire drill is 75% off reset as we celebrate reaching 75,000 subscribers. We'll drop a check in form towards the end of the broadcast where you can sign up. Yep, Daniel's doing that. Um, she sent me, she sent me a message on Slack with some really good bullet points that details it, and maybe I should have just read it off. Uh, but yeah, that's what it is, right? It's it's uh, Top Step TV during the daytime tomorrow. 
is going to be having a fire drill. And just like Danielle said, it's going to it's going to be 75% off one reset per person because we hit 75,000 subscribers. Um, sign up to get the code, one free reset per person. Um, code will be sent Friday morning to your email. If you sign up tonight, you're good and you don't need to sign up again tomorrow when you're watching the daytime show. So if you don't want, if you are not able to catch the daytime show, then sign up tonight and then you don't have to worry about um, signing up then. Um, you'll have until April 10th to use your code and claim your 75% off reset. Any questions I'll pin and take, the, oh, that's a personal note. Um, yeah, but that's gonna be towards the end of class. Um, it sounds like Danielle has that link, so, so watch it. And we're right around 750 people. I, I did not announce it to anybody in the Discord. I didn't tell anybody. So you guys are the ones who get it first. Um, yeah, that being said, and if you guys do have questions, feel free to put them in. I, I'm going to try and get some questions answered, not regarding the reset, but regarding the markets, because let's talk about the markets. Yay, first come first, uh, the first comers. Do you average in? Reckless. Um, averaging in? Sure. I, I, I wouldn't say average in, but for example, sometimes I look to get into three contracts, but I don't want to get in at the exact price. Um, so yeah, I guess you could say scale in. Scale in is a better, is a better one. What time frame for support and resistance? AB. So as you could see, um, here during the slow markets class, I like to trade and look at the daily and then I'll zoom in to the hourly and then finally a five minute chart. But when I'm trading the New York session, I start on a five minute chart and then, and then I'll kind of use a 100 tick chart. And it just depends on the time frame I'm looking at. It depends on the market I'm using. But essentially, in my personal opinion, um, very basic support and resistance and technical analysis works on all time frames. Yeah, Danielle's the goat. I give her crap. I'm not the best. Uh, I'm, I make a really bad employee. Uh, I tell everybody that uh, <laughs> if I could not last being a employee. I had, let me think, let me think. Just, I had two jobs, two jobs as a W-2 employee. And if you guys could believe that, my very, very first job, I quit after two months. Um, I, I started it. It was the same thing day in, day out. I'm like, you know what? This is not for me. I quit. Um, the second job I had at a coal mine and it was the same thing. Uh, it, I just, I couldn't, I cannot stand working an hourly job and doing the same repetitive stuff day in, day out. It's its just frustrating. Um, I'm a horrible employee when it comes to that because maybe I just don't listen. Maybe I i just have a hard time taking orders. <laughs> um, coal miner Dakota, that's wild. Yeah, that, that's back in the days. Um, yeah, make a horrible entire. Yeah, I, no, I, so here's a funny story. Um, when I quit, right? Um, I had my reasons to quit. I don't want to start off because we want to focus on the markets. Um, they offered me the job back because the guy that they used to fill my position, unfortunately passed away in a car accident. Um, so I did go back for a month until they found uh, a replacement. So yeah, yeah, that, that was an interesting thing. It's the same for most people. Um, I averaged three months a job before quitting until I started my own business. I mean, to be honest, a lot of traders that I talk to, uh, <laughs> yeah, that was a dark story, Danielle. There's some dark, st I have some really dark stories that I could tell. I I've seen a lot of death um, around the coal mine, some very, very sketchy stuff. Um, very traumatizing too. Uh, it's dark, some, some really dark stories. Maybe one day I'll, I'll, we'll have to do some, some story time about some of the, some of the stuff stuff that happens in, in some coal mines that is, is very, very um, sad and unfortunate for, for the people and some of the families involved. But on a, yeah, some after dark campfire stories, 
But yeah, I think that's with um, the markets, right? As traders, we really do have a very entrepreneurial mindset. And it's very hard to wrap our head around it because to be honest, we're traders, right? And we're not trading our time for money, um, unfortunately, because I could sit in and I could put eight hours into watching the charts and I could put eight hours into trading and I will not get a paycheck. There's no guaranteed paycheck for us, right? I could only guess at about how many, how much time us as a group here, um, just the 800, traders here watching has put in to trading versus how much money we've pulled out. Um, yeah, I, I know I put in well over 10,000 hours worth of watching the charts and probably if I was working a normal job, I'm, I'd be really curious about how much money I've actually received for the market because yeah, Rick to riches, I'm sure there's people who's put in 10,000 hours of trading and they're, they're negative money. That, that is, that's on another level of uh, psychological, how much time we're putting in as traders and how much money we're getting back. But eventually when we do get that break breakthrough, we're putting in less time for a greater reward. Um, for example, my slow markets class, the way that we're talking now, I put in two hours a night for my trading and I average more than what a lot of, the my friends and old co-workers make working a, a nine to five very laborious job and i'm only putting in two hours a night so there is that payoff for the the ones that are willing to just put in the hard work go through those emotional roller coasters and hopefully be here to stick it out and eventually become profitable because no matter how many hours you put in there, 10,000 hours, a hundred thousand hours, there's no guarantee. You guys probably hear it all the time from D and any other trading person you ever hear. Everyone goes through at their own pace. I've talked to stay at home moms with a kid and a family, and they actually become consistent traders a lot quicker than, um, you know, maybe myself or, or another person. Okay, um, what are you in school for? So I'm no longer in school. I got my I got my degree in finance in Utah. Anyway, let's let's go. I think I'm gonna let this trade play out. There's not really much to talk about. Uh, essentially, that is the trade, right? We had that nice rally. You guys seen me do the analysis. Um, uh, essentially, we consolidated. I got in at a good risk reward price. I got into two contracts. I closed off of one. I'm either considering this as a take profit or maybe a run up higher, but I'm already into a nice four to one, five to one risk reward. I closed out one for a good, you know, one and a half, one to one risk reward, and I'm gonna let this one run. So there's my trade tonight on the NASDAQ. Um, next, let's take a look at crude oil. I missed out on the opportunity on crude unfortunately, because as we start to zoom out, everybody knows I have been looking to get long crude. And let's start at a 60 minute chart. So here's a 60 minute chart. I've been bullish crude. We had something very similar to the NASDAQ. We had this nice, beautiful rally. We got this pullback. You know, obviously with hindsight, this was a great dip to buy. I was looking for a deeper pullback on this little sell-off. Um, I say little sell-off. This is a decent sell-off. I was looking for $80 a barrel and just a nice deep run of stops and then a continuation. Unfortunately, crude did not give that to us. Um, it looks like it just started to rally already, and I, I kind of missed the bus. Um, it's sad. It's unfortunate. I was looking for it to break and just run some stops and then get triggered in. Uh, today, it, crude oil had a different decision and we're already starting to rally. We broke above uh, $1.50 and it looks like you know $82 is in the, the, the next place for crude oil. Um, I'm going to continue to stay hands off. Uh, I would like to see crude have that sell off so I could get in. If not, I... I have to just sit here and watch crude oil rally without me. Um, it's sad, it's frustrating, and it's just one of those things that 
I might have to just watch crude rally without me, even though I'm a bull because I am not seeing a decent risk rewards for me. Man, that's one of the most frustrating things is, is to, to just be bullish. You know, the market you're watching is, you know, starts to rally and now it's going to rally without me. Um, I just must practice discipline and see if oil will give me another setup. Um, if not, we will see what happens. Maybe this bearish trend line can show resistance and see if we can get a sell off in crude oil to give us another good opportunity. Um, maybe if I was watching this at, it looks like during the London open, that could have presented a beautiful breakout. Now this is a 60 minute chart and um, I had some buy limits around $80 a barrel. However, if I was watching this, this was a really beautiful breakout on a 60 minute chart to catch this. Um, I didn't, we'll see. We'll see if we could find some resistance and maybe a pullback um, to see if there's any more opportunities to get in long. If not, like I said, gonna watch crude rally without me. Um, I've been looking for the mid eighties for crude to go. Maybe possibly, I, like I said, this is a, ve this is a stretch. Um, we have this point, we have the $82, $83 a barrel that we were looking at from back in October and November. We've already hit that and rallied. We could very well go back and test it. Um, if we do break out to the next area that we're gonna be looking for is around $85 a barrel here. Um, hopefully there's gonna be some long opportunities before we get there. I'm sure there will be. Um, th those are the areas that I'm looking at um, in the next few months, but we definitely need some opportunities to get in some good risk reward trades um, and hold them overnight. And holding overnight between now and the end of the New York session. Let's see what questions I have missed. Now we are we are important data on Friday. Will the will the open on Sunday be super volatile because markets are closed on Friday? Um, Casey Olson, I'm not sure. Um, it's Easter Sunday, and then on Monday a lot of businesses and a lot of people just take Monday off as well. Um, with important data on Friday, I could only assume that the next time the market opens, there could be a lot of volatility, um, which means that this upcoming Sunday open, um, a lot of people are going to be reacting to that important data on Friday where they couldn't react anywhere else. Um, so that's something to pay attention to. I'm not going to trade it. Uh, it's something we could watch and see how the market reacts on the Sunday open. There might be a big gap in one direction or the other. Um, the order book is gonna be very thin, so we could see a lot of volatility in terms of just the uh, amount of you know volume on the bid and ask and the gaps between. Does the, the failed bearish wedge mean a bullish market? Um, J trades ICT. I'm not sure what you mean by the failed bearish wedge means a bullish market. Maybe you're talking about the, the NASDAQ. Maybe um, if you wanna explain that in the chat, I, I could talk about that a little bit more. My biggest issue to this point is getting, it, getting in too many trades a day without really finding real setups. My question is, what is the main thing that triggers you to get into a trade? So we all struggle with this. I struggle with this as well, is, is we like to, when we're watching the charts, and this is why I love my slow markets. Um, I set up my trades, maybe two or three trades at most every single night. You guys see that I'm in this NASDAQ long here, and I'm planned to you know have a possibility of holding this trade um, into tomorrow. One trade tonight. Um, I had one trade earlier, so I'm at a total of two trades today. So two trades today, and I'm up about $2,000 on these accounts, um, $700 on this account. If I was to sit here and watch the charts, you know, I, I'm a firm believer that the more time you sit here watching the charts, um, the more you try and convince yourself of opportunities and the more we are at risk of over trading. I see it all the time. It happens to me, um, especially when you're looking at smaller time frames. We try and analyze the market. We're always analyzing the market as a human and as our brain is watching patterns, 
you know, looking at indicators, looking at this, looking at that, trying to find opportunities to make money in the market. Um, and we don't want to miss out on opportunities. And that gives us a, a tendency to over trade. I'm happy with placing one or two trades a day, just waiting for a really decent and really good setup. Um, as you guys see me every single night, I'm analyzing the markets. I'm over here on, on this is crude oil. I look at a 60 minute chart and I have not taken a trade on crude oil for a while now. If crude oil rallies, I just have to sit here and watch it. Maybe it's another day or two until a trade sets up on crude. Um, that's the same with maybe Nikkei. Looks like Nikkei, we are starting to sell off again on Nikkei. But, but that's part of it, right? We don't have to trade everything. We don't have to trade every little market we see, every opportunity we see. Um, it, it's just a matter of being, I don't wanna say picky or selective. Um, I like to have really high risk reward opportunities. I like to let the market come to me and that allows me to wait for the market to come to me. And while I'm waiting, it gives me time to do other things, maybe go to the gym, maybe do something else. Um, and when I'm not watching the market, uh, I'm not at risk of messing things up. Do you ever trade multiple accounts together? Um, DMS, yeah, I'm trading multiple accounts now, right? So these are my three express funded accounts. Um, I am testing Top Step X. I got, I have, um, four top step X accounts. And I, I actually hit my max profit on those. Let me see if I could pull up some top step, top step X for you guys. How can we do, um, I'm, yeah, let, let's hold off on the, the support questions for top step X. We have an amazing discord. Um, if I have any suggestions, I would say hop onto Discord and there's an area where you could find lots of answers to your questions um, when it comes to those. So let me get on to my brand new Top Step X combines here. So here's a little, here's a little peek. I've been testing this out. Um, where, where are we going? Um, here's my combines. Here's my four combines. This allows me to, I, I guess this means lead account. And, and here's my my um, other three combines. And you can see I made max profit 4,540 on these. So I'm gonna see if I could get these two express funded accounts um, maybe by next week and continue to test Top Step X. So far I've liked it. Um, my favorite thing about Top Step X, guys, uh, I really have to say this, my favorite thing about Top Step X is the fact, since I am a slow markets trader, my favorite thing is I can have bracket orders, right? I could immediately set what my what I'm looking to make and what I'm looking to risk on every single trade and it will immediately do it for me. This is very smooth and this is one of my favorite features since I've been testing it out. Um, I real highly encourage it, it's very nice. Very similar to what I did here. As soon as I placed my trade, it would immediately put my stop loss, um, however much I wanna risk, which is nice. And then it would set like maybe my take profit. So that's something I'm testing. I really recommend it. Um, like I said, it's it's at pre-release. And so Top Step is, man, it's, it's already an amazing platform now from what I've experienced. And I think it's gonna only get better. Um, I know there's some things that need to be worked out and Top Step is in the middle of doing it, which is, which is absolutely amazing. And they're giving free stuff to traders. Uh, like I said, uh, we have a thousand people watching probably because they heard I am going to be um, doing a fire drill near the end of my class. <laughs> it's funny how that works, right? Um, typically we've been averaging seven to 800 traders here during my slow markets class. And then magically we're over a thousand when people start to hear, um, fire drill maybe and free stuff. <laughs> it's funny how that works. Um, all right, next question. What are the top three things a trader can do to improve their trading? Um, manage risk is number one. Um, number two is keep things super simple. And number three, I would focus on process over profits like the video, you savages. You know what, maybe do I, 
Danielle, can can I can I make a can I make an executive decision? Um, can I say we could only get can we only do the fire drill if we get to a thousand likes? Am I allowed to say that? I'm gonna make the decision. Um, fire drill only if we get to a thousand likes. How's that? Because there's people here um, who is just showing up for this free stuff, and I think I think I'm gonna say that you if we get to a thousand likes, then we could do it. So for all the people who are just showing up for that, there's a thousand twenty nine people. We could do you guys could do it. Um, while we wait, let's take a look at let's take a look at gold. I'm confident we could do it. So take that. <laughs> Daniel, okay. Daniel's going to make the final decision. Um, well, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll see. For you freeloaders who's showing up for the free stuff that doesn't always show up to slow markets, um, hopefully you enjoy it. Like I said, I do this analysis every night. I always love to see you guys. You know, you guys have access to me, you guys have access to. Um, any questions, um, ask me any questions in terms of um, trading, in terms of slow markets. Um, so this is a really rare thing that you guys get. Um, I, I've really made a personal decision to commit a portion of my time every single night to stop Top Step and to do this for Top Step um, here at 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. Um, you cannot find me on social media. You can't find me on a YouTube channel or any other that any other of that stuff. Um, sometimes I'm on Top Step Discord where you could ask questions. But um, yeah, there we are. Shane A, we live in Australia. Do you, <laughs> Jay Whitway? Do I miss the calluses of hard labor? Um, you know, I get some calluses when I'm clicking the button every once in a while on 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 this finger. Uh, no, I, I have plenty. Um, I'm a boxer, so I, I have a lot of scars on my knuckles. I don't know if you guys could see them. Um, but yeah, to an aspect, I do love, I do miss a lot of the aspect of the, the hard labor of not sitting so often because when we sit, and I'm sure almost everybody here does have that same feeling when you're sitting all day, when you're sitting in an office job, it's, it's very difficult to just be active, to get up, move around, eat healthy. Um, it weighs on you psychologically and it can just be difficult. Where are we at for the likes guys? Managing your emotions. Can you review the ES chart? Um, maybe in another one. Um, right now, I've been reviewing NASDAQ, crude oil, the Nikkei, and gold. So let's go ahead and take a look at gold. It did another one of those things again. Um, we are almost finished with the rollover. Um, by Monday, I, I think I am going to be um, a little more comfortable in gold. I've been watching it. It did the same thing, right? We just kind of consolidated here. And then we had a nice spike right back down. You know, same thing today, spike, consolidating. Are we gonna wrap, just gonna sell back down? Um, I've been watching gold. I've been doing the analysis. You know, it's held this nice trend line. This is very consistent. And these are some really decent risk reward trades where we could risk, you know, maybe one to two, uh, you know, $300 to make, you know, 4X that if we could catch some of these pops. I'm not sure. I'm going to continue to anal analyze it. This is the 60 minute chart. Um, this is June um, for um, gold. I'm going to continue to watch this as this pattern starts to form. Um, I do know gold likes to hold these flagging patterns. You could, it's very, it's very consistent in that nature. Like you could see, this is very, this is a very consistent pattern that I, I notice in gold. Um, it's going to be interesting to see how some of these risk rewards are. Um, 
I'm going to continue to watch it. We're going to watch it together, and I am most likely going to slowly implement it into my trading. I will only talk about markets that I trade because I'm a trader first. I'm spending an hour in front of you guys, and I'm analyzing the markets. I'm hitting two birds with one stone, analyzing the markets, looking for trade setups, um, and answering questions at the same time. Yeah, Daniel. <laughs> Daniel, if we get to a thousand likes, Dakota is paying for all free resets for all of us. Uh, not necessarily. You read the details. If you guys were here earlier, we are going to be having a fire drill. I put the challenge for a thousand likes. Um, I'm at a because I'm just competitive. Um, I'm competing with um, top steps, fast markets. Um, I'm always doing that. Yeah, I forgot to read the details again. Um, we are. <laughs> I'm just, you know what, maybe, you know what I was going to do? What I was going to say um, is, guess what, guys? G guess what's happening tonight as we speak? Does anybody know what's happening tonight as we speak? Yeah. LeBron's making an all-time scoring record as we, got, as we talk. He's doing that. I was going to see if... Danielle would connect um, the the fire drill with LeBron James scoring points. If, Le if LeBron James scores 20 points or more, then we have the fire drill. Then we could get you guys uh, rooting for LeBron. Would that, would that, how would have you guys taken that? I was going to do that um, if, if during Andre. S can't stand LeBron. <laughs> basketball lane football you like soccer i i'm a big messi fan argentina kobe is the goat it's still by invite only yeah so i'm going to repeat this one more time and then i'm going to continue to the markets um so essentially i'm going to read this off because you know we have some other people joining i'm looking to get to get to a thousand likes um and if so we are also going to be having a fire drill. Like I said, this is a fire drill coming during slow markets. Um, I Hopefully you guys just do not show up and, you know, show up for the free stuff and then leave. We want a lot of traders to come in here, ask questions. We want traders to get better. We want to improve our trading. And I hopefully I can start helping a lot more people um, understand maybe some slow markets concepts ask very basic questions. It doesn't matter if you're just a New York session trader. Maybe you're getting ready for bed. Maybe you're relaxing and you have some questions about the market before you try, you know, before you try start your trading day the next day, ask some questions, maybe look at, you know, a different point of view from some analysis on a, a, a live funded trader here and um, help you. Right. But yeah, as I said, we're going to be having that fire drill. It's going to be coming out in the chat. I believe Danielle will be pinning the form in the YouTube chat. It's going to be a, a sign up for a 75% off a reset per person uh, to celebrate hitting 75,000 subscribers here on Top Step TV. You'll have a sign up um, tomorrow. Top Step is going to be doing this um, during the day. So if you signed up tonight, you don't have to worry about signing up tomorrow. Um, I don't have a fire. I don't have a siren sound, Danielle. I, I'm, I failed on that one. Um, I, I don't have a fire drill sound. Uh, I, I'm not going to attempt to do it with my voice. Uh, I'm not, I'm not Hogue where I, he does some amazing sound effects, but, um, it's coming. <laughs> we could do the fire drill. <laughs> Um, but as I was saying, we would have until April 10th um, to use that code and to claim your 75% off. The It's going to be pinned to the chat. Oh, it's already pinned to the chat. So so there's your guys' fire drill. Have at it. Um, sign up. There it is. Now we're going to watch the viewer count just drop because you guys are just a bunch of people just show up and uh, collect the free stuff. Um so as you guys are there, I think I'm over that fire drill now. Um, I'm, I'm going to go back to trading because I care more about trading than the fire drill. So anyway, I'm long the NASDAQ. Um, we did sell off. We did touch right where my entry point is. 
Um, here's my stop loss. I'm looking to hold this overnight. Um, this is a five minute chart. I'm gonna switch back to the Nikkei because we're still getting some volatility in the Nikkei. We're down about six tenths of a percent. So I just noticed something here on the Nikkei that I'm looking to trade. I might have missed this. Uh, maybe this is something where I was just paying too much attention to the chat. Um, we, we're kind of starting to break down, right? We did come down to this support level here, right around 40,300, and we're starting to bounce off of that. Uh, we're down about a half a percent now. Maybe we have a continuation down. Um, that is a possibility where we might look for a sell-off. Let me look at a 100 tick chart. Yeah, have fun with the fire drill, guys. I'm gonna continue analyzing the market. Um, Cause that's what I'm here for. I know that's what a lot of traders are. are, are here. I spent too much time talking about the fire drill. Sorry guys. Um, yeah, we, we, we finally just broke down yesterday's pivot. Um, I, I think I might look for a continuation to the downsize to the downside. March 25th, we did come down to the 40,000 level and test it. Um, we are getting a little bit of a sell-off as we are speaking now. Down only a half a percent. Um, NASDAQ is kind of just consolidating here. Yeah, that was, I man, I think I kind of missed that trade. The trade was to, to get in on this. Um, you know what? I didn't miss it. Let's see if we could hop in. Okay, I'm short. I'm short on the Nikkei. I'm gonna see if this is this is a decent risk reward. I'm gonna go ahead and put a my stop loss in. Um, I'm looking for a break of the pivot low from yesterday. So I'm gonna I'm looking for a break here. If we do break, and then maybe I look for a take profit right around forty thousand two hundred here in the Nikkei. I'm gonna watch this one play out. I'm short. Um, and my express funded accounts. So three of them, I'm short three. Let's watch this play out. I think that's about it for me guys. Let, let's open up the last 10 minutes for the Q and A. How many likes do we end up getting? <laughs> um, let's, let's see. Well, we didn't get to the thousand likes and you guys got that fire drill. I like to make it hard on you guys. Sorry, it's just me. I have mixed feelings about free stuff. I, I really do. But it's nice, right? Because honestly, if I'm going to pay for a combine or a reset, or if I'm going to uh if I'm going to reset my account, I, I trade a 150k account, that's $150. And if I'm just watching Top Step TV and they give me a free $150. I'm going to take it, right? Because that's a free hundred and fifty dollars, and that's a lot, and it's free, right? And you could, you know, either it's a, a reset, it's an activation fee, and the the risk reward on that, in terms of just from a capital perspective, or if you're looking at um, trading as a business, uh, which I'm sure a lot of you guys are doing, and you're looking at trading as a business, um, you are paying one hundred and fifty dollars. That's an expense towards your business. Um, whether it's a free reset or a 75% off reset, that reduces that expense by 75%. And say you're a consistent trader. You know, if it's me, I get a, a combine, I pay $150 or, you know, 75% from that. And then I turn that, I, you know, turn that into an express funded account and I, I trade it. And, you know, uh, two weeks worth of work, I, you know, maybe get a payout for, you know, two, three thousand dollars, then you could see that risk reward ward, right? Trader spoil I wouldn't say spoiled brats. Resets really do help, right? That there's there's many types of traders here at Top Step. I see them all. Um resets can be used in a very, very good way. Um resets could also be used as a very bad way. Um, the bad way being, you know, traders who just are jumping in and out, they're risking too much size, they, they blow an account and they look for the free stuff to um, just reset, right? Trying to game the system. 
And then there's the, the good way, right? Traders who are really trying and practicing the process and maybe um, they're working at it, you know, three, four, five weeks later, they end up getting close to their daily loss limit and they're, you know, developing a strategy, developing a trading plan. And instead of, you know, needing to come up with another $150, which they may or may not have, because depending, uh, you know, who and where we are at around the world or where we're at in our life, um, $150 could mean a lot of money. Uh, I know as a college student, when I was just out of high school, $150 is a week's worth of food for me. Um, top ramen and um, all of the cheap stuff, right? Um, that means a lot. And we do have traders around the world where we have um, in you know less than ideal economies. And that even goes further. I know that I spent I spent, you know, just over a month in Peru and people could live off uh, $150 a week. That was for sure. I, I, I felt, I felt like a king when I was in Peru where I was eating five-star meals every single night and, uh, for the same price of like a McDonald's meal here in the U S. <laughs> so 150 bucks to some people that's, you know, seems like nothing and others it's a lot. So Take it as you guys will. Top Step is amazing. They're always looking out for the best uh, of you guys. Um, Richard Harris. Yeah, I spent some time in Lima. Then I went to Arequipa and seen a few other places out there. Fort Worlds. What if you fill it out twice? Um, I'm assuming if you fill it out twice, you only get used once. Like I said. Yeah, I went to Cusco as well. Cusco was very, very nice. I'm watching this, um, hop over on this Nikkei trade. We are starting to sell off. Let's see if we could catch this. Let's see if we could catch a nice, a nice scalp. How's this? We're going to scalp this during slow markets. We'll, we'll see if this scalp plays off. I, I want to see if we could sell off down to maybe 200 or, or below. Scalping slow markets. We are trading the Japanese Nikkei. And we are testing the bottom of this pivot from yesterday. Um, we're going to see if we can get a nice little trade. I don't, this is not going to be an overnight trade for me. Um, this is just going to be just a quick in and out. Um, not like you guys see and not a scalp during the New York session, but we'll see if we get a nice break. And sometimes if the Nikkei does break, um, we do move. Um, for example, from where I entered, where, where I did, I, I entered at 300. So if I, if I sold at 40,300, it's $25 per tick. Um, if the market gets all the way down to here, that's a $500 move. As you can see from here to here, you know, these are $500 moves. So it, it's, it's decent money. I, do I recommend trading the Nikkei? No, I, I wouldn't recommend trading the Nikkei if you're brand new. Um, it's not really for the faint of heart. Uh, I would work on something slow like crude oil, maybe the, um, ES or the NASDAQ, something that has minis. So you don't have to risk too much. Why the NASDAQ trade? Um, if you were here earlier, you could have seen it. Um, I, I definitely will recommend if you join me during slow markets um, from start to finish, you will see a lot more of my analysis. Uh, you guys see that I'm in a NASDAQ long. Um, if you're wondering why, go back and rewatch this. Um, I explained it at the very beginning of the class. You know, everybody who joins me during slow markets consistently um, knows and understands this trading style. And yeah, that's part of, if you missed it, that's too bad. You know, that's part of being with me every single night. You get to ask me questions. You get to see my trading style. And then you ever wonder, you know, why is coach Dakota on the top 10 leaderboard, right? You know, what's he doing? What's his strategy? How's he doing it? Well, if you join me every night during slow markets, I, I kind of show you um, like this is, this is me doing it. Like I, I do it in front of you guys, um, Monday through Friday. I, like I, I really do. You guys see me place trades. You can see me analyze the markets. Um, and I'm trading my account in front of you live. Um, yeah. So that then you don't have to ever ask questions. If you, if you ever wonder what Dakota does, how he's doing it, just, just tune into slow market. Um, Moon, Nikkei doesn't trade in top step. Um, yeah, this is top step and I do trade the Nikkei. 
Um, if you're trading top step X, go ahead into top step X. There's a suggestion. We all know how to get there. Here's the top step X. Go over to this question mark it and go in and upvote it. Dakota, do you see any connection between the NASDAQ and crude oil? I don't look for correlation between markets, really. Um, I, I tend to just not overcomplicate it. For me, the s more simple I could keep my trading, the better it is. Um, usually one to three contracts, unless I really screw up and I fat finger it like I did twice already this week, um, which is no fun at all, fat fingering my trades. This is the first time here. Heard about your show this morning on Top Step TV. I trade every night. We'll definitely be joining you from here on out. Well, thank you. Welcome. Yeah, like I said, um, we're only just, what What are we at, um, Danielle? It's only been over just over a month. This is the our first month here doing this on slow markets. Um, and it has been really fun. I've got a lot of great feedback. Uh, a lot of traders who have daytime jobs that have a family that can't trade during the New York session has been able to, you know, trade a similar style, trade during the overnight session, um, during slow markets and become and start to show some type of success. Um, nothing makes me happier than when I get a message on Discord saying that, hey, I passed my combine for the first time um, because I'm trading, you know, something very similar to you. Or I got my first payout because of that. And tonight, um, we're going to be going over, or not tonight, during slow markets, we're going to be going over the NASDAQ, crude oil, Nikkei, and a little bit of gold. Um, gold is new to me. Um, I used to be a gold trader for you know the past five years. I kind of stopped trading gold, but I'm still trying to get back to gold and talk about it each night. We will see how it plays out. Whew. All right. I think that was it, guys. That that was fun. Um, I don't know how I feel about the fire drill anymore. <laughs> Sorry. Um, that was fun. We, we want traders. Uh, I really want traders to, to focus on the markets. Um, fire drill was really, really fun. We'll have to, to do something else similar um, to always award the the traders in slow markets i am here for slow markets traders and the traders that are here during my slow markets class i want to reward them um, i don't want people just showing up for the free stuff um, and i will continue to push for that I, I love to see everybody joining whether you're in bed whether you're just getting comfortable getting ready for bed or wherever you're at around the world i love it uh, i appreciate it all the time and I think that's all, folks. Yeah, take care, everybody. And uh, no class tomorrow, so I will catch you Monday night for April Fool's. <laughs>